eclipse, and we sent the one person who can throw more shade than the moon. Did you guys see that it was night for a second? Kyle's on assignment. I absolutely believe the Earth is flat, that the information that we're talking about is real. There is no detectable curvature. On a day the solar system wows us, these two try to top it. The flat earthers try to debunk gravity with Jeremy Vajola in Let's Be Clear. And let's be clear about gravity. The officer couldn't believe that I was still alive. If it didn't cause this crash, what did? Next. When you look up to the sky, like during the eclipse, you don't expect something to fall from it. You might expect that same courtesy from, you know, a bridge, but then I wouldn't have a, this prop of a concrete chunk that fell from the sky is really heavy, and it came from a car in Wheat Ridge. The officer couldn't believe that I was still alive. It was just a loud crack. My windshield started coming into the cab, and I thought, what did I hit? One look inside the car reveals that question is backwards. She should be asking, what hit me? I was going under I-70, and it fell down. Part of the interstate fell down on my car. You can understand why this driver might be shaken up and not want to be seen on camera. I mean, how often does the sky fall on you? I know this man drove up beside me, and he said, the interstate fell on you because I must have had this shock look or something. He goes, the interstate fell on you, pull over. Concrete from the I-70 bridge over Ward Road landed on and in her car. That's the rear view mirror that hit me. The front passenger seat was destroyed. Everything happened, luckily, on the passenger side. Except that's where her dog normally hangs out, on the passenger side, here, usually in the back. This time, though, in the front, until she says he leapt to the back driver's side one second earlier. Had he been in his bed, he would have been shredded by the glass. They need to fix the bridges. They're falling apart. I reached out to CDOT, and a spokeswoman agrees that we have an aging infrastructure, but said this bridge is structurally sound. This concrete, if anywhere, came from the overhang, which has nothing to do with the structural safety of the bridge. Who's responsible for the damage? The state of Colorado. CDOT. The insurance company, of course, you know, did their part, but it's not the insurance company's fault. It's the state's fault. Did I mention it was heavy? When you think the state damages your property, you can file a claim that usually doesn't get paid. That's because you hit a pothole that no one knew about ahead of time. But come on, I don't write the state's checks, but come on. 41 days. What can happen in 41 days? I'm done with Congress. I'm in for governor. I'm out for governor. I'm still done with Congress. Check that. I'm in for Congress. Congressman Ed Perlmutter gives the ultimate just kidding and is back in the race for the 7th Congressional District, 41 days after ending his run for governor and saying he's not going to run for re-election. First of all, are you trying to trump the eclipse? No, I think the eclipse was the number one story today, by far. What changed in 41 days? Well, I had a chance to kind of reduce all the traveling I was doing and the fundraising that I was doing in connection with the governor's race. And I got some energy back, but what has really changed is just where if I was at the grocery store or the golf course or at our Vietnam uh, vet ceremony church, people were asking me to reconsider running for the 7th CD. Two of the four Democratic candidates, Dominic Moreno and Brittany Pedersen, have already ended their campaigns. Andy Kerr and Dan Baer are still deciding. 41 days ago, I asked what Perlmutter was going to do with the money he raised for his gubernatorial campaign. He said he was going to pay the bills and prorate a refund. Just so you know, the money Perlmutter raised for governor is not allowed to be used for his newly renowned congressional race. Attorney General Cynthia Kaufman announced today faithless elector Michael Baca won't be prosecuted for failing to make good on his promise to vote for Hillary Clinton. Baca was one of Colorado's nine original members of the Electoral College. He voted for John Kasich back in December as part of a failed attempt to rally enough electors around the country to deny Donald Trump the presidency. Well, it's not every day a crowd of people look to the sun, cheer, and cry. That happened today in Glendo, Wyoming, as the moon crossed in front of the sun. Thousands of people took on the tiny town to see the eclipse of the path of totality. And Noel Brennan and Ann Herps were there, camping outside a cabin with 90 new friends. Today is better than we've seen in a while. The day is finally here. So. A pretty start to a summer day. 
is pretty special when you've been waiting for this day. And so, 47 years. For about as long as you can remember. 1970, I was like 10 years old. After seeing like a 97% eclipse then, I started looking for a total that I could see. And this was the first one. Greg Halleck. Well, there you go. <laughs> focuses on details of the sun. You can see sunspots. Well, most of us don't go beyond the surface. You should always wear as high as SPF as you possibly can, really. <laughs> Eric Olson is learning a lot. So we counted 89 people. Because there's so many willing to teach. We're going to see the sun's corona around the sun. There's a little eruption. You know, what I'm seeing right now, this very second, left the sun eight minutes ago. Among the masses camped out in Eric's front yard. Guinness Book of uh, Glendo Records or something. <laughs> is a team of astronomers who traveled thousands of kilometers. We am from Canada, so we're, we're metric. <laughs> to see the solar eclipse from Glendo, Wyoming, at the center of the path of totality. Yeah, thank you for so, arranging oh. for the moon to go in front of oh, the sun. <laughs> it's my pleasure. Eric was the gracious host, but Mother Nature was just as accommodating. Should be about one minute before we start seeing stuff. It's almost like a crescent moon that you'd see in the middle of the night. The sun's looking pretty much like a banana. When the star came out, <laughs> she shined. Oh, diamond ring. Oh, no glasses, you don't need glasses. For Greg. You can see the star next to the moon. It was worth the travel and worth the wait. That is just gorgeous. A pretty start to the day <laughs> could not have ended any better. Oh, that was amazing. For next, I'm Noel Brennan. <sighs> well, if you remember Noel and Ann last night, they were bragging about no traffic. They report now everyone is stuck in traffic. It's taking people four hours to travel three miles to the interstate to I-25 from the town of Glendo. Well, if anyone hadn't noticed yet because you looked at the eclipse, I'm not Kyle Clark. He was that one who went to Wyoming to check out the eclipse. Well, now that it's over, he's here to tell us our thirst for adventure should not be. Hello from Laramie, Wyoming. The eclipse is over. Here's my thought. Don't wait for the next great eclipse. Don't wait to make an adventure for yourself. Don't wait to spark those conversations about science with kids who have a curiosity to learn or adults who slept through that part of science class. Don't wait to explore hidden corners of the Rocky Mountains. Don't wait to turn off the main road, go down a dirt road. You'll encounter some obstacles. Did you guys see that it was night for a second? They're nothing that you can't handle. Don't wait to go off and see places that you never even thought about visiting. That's where the true wonder lies. And don't wait to go and meet people who can't wait to show you their own corner of America in which they have so much pride. I've met them all across Wyoming this weekend. So as America looks ahead to the next eclipse, look ahead to next week. Look ahead to next weekend. All those things, the people, the places, the adventures, they await if you don't wait. Cue up some Bonnie Tyler to serenade this couple that had an eclipse of the heart today because they got married during the eclipse. I just hoped that everybody could enjoy the eclipse and have a good time and that we could see everyone. And our Let's Be Clear series returns and it might leave you hazy when you hear from two people whose beliefs fall flat with explaining today's eclipse. We don't know everything. We don't have all the answers. All we can tell you is that we're not spinning on a magical ball in space. Yeah. Next. If it's gotta be a Monday, how about this Monday? Eclipse 2017, going into the history books and hopefully you got to enjoy some of it. I'm meteorologist Kathy Sabin and other than a high thin layer cirrus cloud, we did really well. Mother Nature helping us out this afternoon. 87 are high, right where we should be this time of year. And we're tracking a couple of high base storms. Little wind and lightning still possible along the front range tonight. Heavier storms well south of the forecast area. High pressure's gonna allow that tropical moisture back into the region, so better chance of storms here Wednesday and Thursday. A slightly cooler day tomorrow. A second system, a front to the north, is going to knock on the door and drop temperatures into the lower 80s and maybe create some areas of fog on the far eastern plains for those of you up and about early tomorrow morning. Tonight, not bad. Couple of foothill storms and then we're done. 58 degrees, a beautiful new moon tonight. Tomorrow, sunshine in 76. Afternoon storms, about a 20% chance of rain. It looks like tomorrow will be the coolest day of the week. Thursday, the stormiest day. Spectacular weather conditions. 
conditions heading into the upcoming weekend. No 90s there, no record heat waves. And Marshall, these artistic shots of the eclipse coming in are spectacular, much like your suit and tie combo. Hey there. I thought somebody painted that on the sidewalk out front. That was How fascinating. How awesome is that? Well, who's not going to remember where they were today when the street lights came on at noon, the shadows through the leaves look like Cheshire cat smiles, and we learned what 8% sunlight looked like. Well, none of that will be the memory of one couple who vowed to be different than the rest of us. Michelle Hoffman and Cale Bibb are from Longmont. They met at a concert four years ago, and they've been planning for their big day for about 10 months. It took some precise preparation to make sure the ceremony and photos all lined up at the same time. As far as planning the ceremony, I think we nailed it just from being able to research exactly when it was going to hit and what direction we needed to be looking. What better day to do it than right here at Red Rocks because we love coming to shows here. We're both Colorado natives. Having a celestial event going on in the background was uh, a way to kind of pump the brakes a little bit for the, for the nerves. The bride and the groom even had their wedding bands made out of meteorites. And don't think they didn't skimp on guests. Everyone was given eclipse glasses to check everything out. Let's be clear. If the Earth is flat, what did we see today? Jeremy Hohola sits down with part of the flat earther movement. Percent of the people that are calling you stupid, all this, they've never looked into it for five minutes. So this is supposed to be, a, you know, 2017. You're supposed to be able to question things. You'll want to gather round in a circle for this one and then stay to see the most unflat Colorado thing we saw today. This is next. Today's eclipse is a reminder of our place in the solar system, so I, I hope you're sitting down for this. Despite loads of irrefutable proof, some people still believe the Earth is flat, a conspiracy that is attracting more people who reject basic science. Jeremy Hohola posed your questions to these flat earthers in this next Let's Be Clear interview. Clarity and transparency. Things you want from people like politicians and newsmakers. Well, let's make it happen with a simple concept. We've got a mobile studio, two chairs, a camera crew, and most importantly, we've got you. Oh, you're coming in. Right Your questions. Yeah, we've got a viewer question in coming in from Facebook right now. Questions I make sure they answer. Uh, this is not a joke. This, this is, is not a joke. joke. You this guys is not a troll. legitimately believe yes. this theory. Yeah, 100%. Yes. And it's shot live. Let's be clear. Matt Procella and Jimmy Shields, they're part of a growing movement of people who legitimately believe the Earth is flat. Yeah, you may roll your round globular eyes at these flat earthers. Think it's a joke? I promise this interview won't be flat. So Matt Procella, Jimmy Shields, you guys consider yourselves flat earthers. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. And how long have you been flat earthers for? Uh, myself, personally, um, I've been into the truth movement for over a decade, and um, I just, um, I've just i been about a flat earther for, I'd say, a little over a year now. Okay, okay. So I'm going to get, we've had some viewer submitted questions. Carol says, I hate to see a legitimate news source give time to deluded beliefs like this. What's your response to that? Well, it, almost all of us that come into this, we look at it almost the same. We have the same initial reaction going, what, the flat earthers? There's people that think the earth is flat? Like for me, when I started looking into flat earth, I, I came to the realization that water always finds and maintains its level when it's unmanipulated. Not to cut you off. Sure, keep I mean, I mean, it. the way you're talking here, I mean, you sound like you legitimate believe, leg legitimately believe this. I absolutely believe the Earth is flat. Th this is not a joke. This, this is, is not a joke. joke. You guys not a troll. legitimately believe yes. this theory. 100%. Yes. 100%. Okay. Okay. Jimmy Root asked overnight, and if it is flat, how can you explain gravity, or is that a hoax too? Is gravity a hoax? Density and buoyancy. If something is heavier than air, it falls. If something is lighter than air, it rises. Simple, no gravity needed. So gravity, in your mind, is a hoax? Gravity has never been shown to exist. No experiment has ever proven gravity, ever, once. Let's go to the next viewer question here. This is one of my favorite questions, and this is, this is a question that repeatedly popped up on the feed. This is from Patrice. If the Earth is flat, why hasn't anyone gone to the edge and taken a picture? 
We're basically kept in the middle, and that's due to the Antarctic Treaty. In our model, uh, not everybody agrees with this, but in our model, we're surrounded by Antarctica. It's not a continent on the bottom of the ball. It surrounds the flat Earth, holds the water in, and there's a treaty in place signed by 52 nations, and nobody's allowed to go there independently. You have to go there on, only on guided tours, and it's all... We're basically kept away from there. If you wanted to so go wait, to Antarctica... Wait, hold on, I'm oh, going to follow up this follow-up question. We're basically kept away from there. Mm -hmm. How, what, what do you mean by that? You can't go on your own. Yeah. If you do go, you're going on a guided tour, and you're going to be controlled while you're there. So has anybody from people who believe like you guys tried to send people out there to the edge of the earth? We're working on funding right now. All right. Uh, Emma wants to know... This is another uh, Facebook viewer question. Emma wants to know, then what causes climate, seasons or wind? We don't know everything. We don't have all the answers. All we can tell you is that we're not spinning on a magical ball in space yeah. with water stuck to the outside of it. Your images you see are fake. Look for curvature. You're not going to find it. Through a platform like this, we're not going to be able to convince many, but we're going to let you know that we're out here. We've spent our whole lives watching movies, going to school, just being the globes in your face. Globes, globes, globes. Heliocentric model this, gravity that. Everything, it's just, it's all programming. Once you can break through that programming, look at it unbiasedly, you'll see that the information that we're talking about is real. There is no detectable curvature, and there is no measurable motion. I would suspect that there's probably some NASA scientists maybe watching right now. Good. They're probably rolling their eyes at us for giving you guys a platform. I thought that and this was American. To you guys, uh, what do you have to say to the NASA scientists who may be watching this right now? Then? Stop lying to us. Yeah. We know you're manipulating your photos. We know what CGI looks like. We're not idiots. We know you never went to the moon. Yeah. So come debate us. But 99% of the people that are calling us stupid, all this, they've never looked into it for five minutes. So this is supposed to be, a, you know, 2017. You're supposed to be able to question things. So why don't you question a few things? Okay. Uh, follow-up question. This is my own personal follow-up question. Do you guys believe in any other kind of, you know, beliefs that are not mainstream, uh, like other conspiracies? I believe we're lied to by the media about 99.9% .9 of the time. Okay. Do you think we're lying right now? You personally? Yeah. No. Okay. But we're talking more mainstream. Okay. But I would like to him to answer that, too. Yeah. Matt? Uh, well, when it comes to... Actually, could you just repeat the question? Yeah, uh, he, he believes, Matt, J Jimmy was saying that the media 99% of the time lies. Are we lying right now? I don't believe you're lying. I think you're actually giving us the time of day. What you do when you edit the video yeah. later is we could be yeah. smeared. It happens to us a lot. All right, well, gentlemen, even though I strongly disagree with your belief, and I probably will never, ever come to the conclusion that the Earth is flat, I want to thank you for subjecting yourselves are you to gonna the, are you to gonna the, look at it or are you just gonna I just can't I'm not I'm a skeptical person by nature but am I ever gonna believe that the earth is flat absolutely not all right fellas well thank you for so much thank for joining you. me here in the let's be clear truck once again this was all recorded live on Facebook that interview is gonna live on our Facebook page raw and unedited so thank you for watching and that Let's be clear. Thank you, sir. Thank wow. you. Awesome. Very good. Cool. Awesome, yeah. That means there's more to watch. We're planning more Let's Be Clear interviews in the future. Got an idea for Jeremy? Email him, jeremy at 9news.com, or reach out on Facebook and Twitter. The most round Colorado thing we saw today, and your feedback. That's next. The most Colorado thing we saw today is going to make you want to go toward DIA without having to catch a flight. These beautiful sunflowers, thousands of them, they're east of the airport in Watkins. It's the perfect time of year to take a drive and admire them, like Carrie, next producer and now photographer extraordinaire. She says she's never seen anything quite like it, so if you go take photos, be sure to send them to us. You guys had a lot to say about the flat earthers. Jack, anxiously awaiting proof the earth is flat. Also, Marshall, looking good. Either you looked at the eclipse without your glasses on, or you've been driving under I-70. Kyle is back tomorrow.